Hey everyone, it's Lindsay, and thanks for tuning in to First Aid Express. I'm your guide through everything musculoskeletal, and we're here today to compare and contrast the two different types of muscle fibers. It's a pretty quick lesson, but important for testing nonetheless. Whenever I think of the different muscle types, I think of my brother and his wrestling career. He's a strength and conditioning coach, and training to emphasize different muscle types is his expertise. In wrestling and professional fighting, different weight classes rely on different muscle types to give them the upper hand in the ring. Did you know lightweight matches usually run 20 minutes, while heavyweight matches last only four? That's five times longer a fight for the lightweights. The different nuances in endurance and muscle composition is key in training for these athletes. And today, we will be giving you some insight to the two different muscle types that are behind the long game or the short game. Today, we have one pretty expansive goal. We will differentiate type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers based on their metabolic function, contraction, and constitution, so that on test day, it'll be second nature. Let's start by covering type 1 fibers first. In first aid, there's a clever mnemonic to remembering key facts about this fiber type, one slow red ox. Type 1 is pretty self-explanatory. Type 1 muscle fibers. Slow. These muscle fibers are coined slow twitch, but hold tight. More on that in a moment. Red. These muscle types, when prepared with special stains, are red in color due to their increased mitochondria and myoglobin content. Ox. These muscles primarily use oxidative phosphorylation as their source of ATP. This only makes sense with their increased mitochondria and myoglobin content allowing for increased oxygen requirement and consumption. In type 1, muscle fibers are geared towards slow, prolonged contraction, perfect for muscles that need to be activated for sustained amounts of time. These are the slow and steady muscles that play the long game. There are endurance muscles. So what kind of muscles do you think would primarily be type 1? These muscles have your back in more ways than one. If you caught that pun and thought paraspinal muscles, you'd be correct. In this image, the paraspinal muscles most posteriorly are highlighted in addition to the psoas muscles more anteriorly. These muscles are composed of mainly type 1 fibers. They are activated most of the day to support our posture and stature. These muscles are fatigue resistant and are responsible for the long day's work of low level contraction to keep your back straight. Thus, they need a large supply of ATP, requiring an abundance of mitochondria and oxygen to do their job. Now that we've covered one slow red ox, let's move on to type 2 fibers. If type 1 were the slow and steady turtle of the muscle fiber race, type 2 are the quick and speedy hare. We don't have a clever mnemonic for this muscle type, but it's pretty opposite when compared to type 1 fibers. Where type 1 fibers are slow twitch, Type 2 fibers offer fast and dynamic contraction. Where type 1 fibers stain red due to high concentrations of mitochondria and myoglobin, type 2 stain lighter due to lower content of these proteins. And because of lower concentrations, type 2 fibers do not have the capacity for oxidative phosphorylation that type 1 fibers do. Therefore, they rely on anaerobic glycolysis for rapid sources of ATP and energy for contraction. Therefore, type 2 fibers lend themselves to more dynamic and forceful movements like sprinting and weightlifting. And if you're a sports fan, you will recognize this iconic athlete as the fastest man on earth, Usain Bolt. Running 100 meters in 9.58 seconds, the amount of type 2 muscle fibers that he is bound to have is astonishing. Bolt requires lots of force for a short amount of time, which makes type 2 fibers his best friend and key to his athletic success. I've mentioned muscle fibers appearing red and white, but how is this determined? This slide is a rotator muscle fiber preparation stained with cytochrome oxidase. Let's do a quick throwback to our biochemistry chapter. Do you remember the function of that enzyme? Cytochrome oxidase, also known as complex 4, is the final enzyme in the electron transport chain of mitochondria. It shuttles electrons to oxygen to create water and contributes protons to the gradient that will eventually create ATP through ATP synthase. 
With this special stain, we are able to loosely categorize muscle fibers based on the mitochondrial, and by extension, cytochrome oxidase content. A deeper red color that we expect of type 1 slow twitch muscles represents increased mitochondrial density, as seen in this fiber here. Therefore, these fibers have greater oxidative capacity to sustain prolonged metabolism for endurance function. The paler muscle fibers then represent type 2 fibers that rely mostly on anaerobic glycolysis for short bursts of energy for fast twitch contractions. For the purposes of step 1, muscle fiber types are divided into two categories, type 1 and type 2. But however, in reality, there are subtypes of type 2, and as you can see in this picture, classifying muscle types is not a dichotomous 1 or 2 or red or white designation. Depending on strength and conditioning training, whether it's endurance training or high intensity bursts, our muscles can adapt. Endurance training can increase capillary density, increase fiber size, and increase mitochondrial concentration within a fiber. And this can alter the proportion of fiber types within a given muscle. In this instance, it's truly use it or lose it. Should you continually train for a marathon, the proportion of type 1 fibers would be emphasized to suit your purpose. And in contrast, if a professional weightlifter emphasizes dynamic Olympic lifts, you can expect their muscles to be tailored to that movement with more developed type 2 fibers. Now that we've differentiated type 1 and type 2 muscle fiber types, let's check back in with a quick flash quiz before we conclude. Duchenne muscular dystrophy affects type 2 muscle fibers early in disease. Knowing what you just learned about muscle fiber types, what kind of movements might patients with DMD find difficult early in disease? A, keeping their back erect and straight throughout the day, or B, quickly running and jumping at recess? The answer here would be B, quickly running and jumping at recess. Remember that type 2 muscle fibers are responsible for quick and dynamic movements, where type 1 fibers control sustained endurance contraction for posture and stability of back muscles. The take-home points of our presentation today can be summed up efficiently and thoroughly in the chart you can find on page 457 of your first aid. I hope this quick video helped you on your way to step one in clinical success. Again, my name is Lindsay, and it's been a joy walking you through first aid musculoskeletal chapter. If you thought this video was helpful, throw a thumbs up below. I'll see you back here for more First Aid Express videos. Good luck and happy studying.